choosing literally from a personal preference of, of a lot of different factors that come into play and personal interest in music and music history. I found the combination of, of the theme of queer run and owned businesses, venues and music history in such a small neighborhood to be an interesting combination that I wanted to explore. So the closure of Kajibi being specifically run by queer communities for the queer communities. I sort of wanted to look a bit closer on what other alternatives there were and how the closure of Kajibi specifically had an impact on both Little Italy as a neighborhood, what music venues are available, and then again on what is available for the queer communities in this particular part of town. Yeah, again, Kajibi is one, one in the line of, of many that have gone similar fates to, to end, maybe because of the DIY mindset not fitting into the framework of what a cultural institution is supposed to be in the framework of the society and the definition of what is regulated and tolerated by police or by government standards. A long list of Montreal staple restaurants, cafes, other initiatives, creative spaces had to find a solution to the equation which is a complicated one of adhering to the queer communities and staying true to what it was before and balancing that with the negative impacts that gentrification has on the neighborhood and finding uh, a source of income in the clientele that is the new groups of people moving into the neighborhood. I guess this is more of a general reflection of Montreal, but it is just very culturally rich in terms of having people from all over the world. The beauty of that, of, of meeting points that allow for people from different corners of the city and different corners of the world to come together. Again, this is not necessarily about the theme of my episode, but yeah, a place where a lot of paths meet, I guess. Sunshine, I'm the happiest when you're around. Let's all mind when we 